<laughs> when you talk to Cower, yeah. he's probably going to take a job. Do you say, take it easy here because there's some bad football teams in the National Football League? That well, I mean, if he does take a job and he goes to a bad team, he's the type of guy that can turn it around. I mean, the one thing I will tell you that uh, my last two or three, I don't know if it's been two or three years since it's two years, three years. It's been three years, I think, since he's been out. And I've really enjoyed working with him, learned a lot. You know, we spend a lot of time, you know, off the set and we go to dinner here and there. And, and uh, he would be terrific somewhere for some team. And he, he could turn a franchise around for sure. He's that good. Our one thing, and we all agree on this, about the, the, the pregame shows on Sunday on any yeah. network. Do you ever feel like maybe there's they add too many guys? They've added maybe one too many guys because when you want when you have an opinion on something or if you want to talk about maybe breaking down a game, everybody's got to get their two cents in. So you might only have ten seconds to do it. Yeah, that's the thing. That's that's what it is, and and uh, you know you have to get your point across pretty quickly. And, mm -hmm. and uh, but it is fun. I mean, it's a it's a pregame show. You try to have fun, and, and at times you don't get a chance to talk as much maybe football as you want to talk and get into the X and O's and some of the philosophies and, and, and that's, you know, I do a radio show in Florida, you know, on Monday mornings and I get to talk a lot more about the game sometimes, but that's the fun part about a pregame show. It's, it's more or less, you know, you're picking the games, you, you try to get, you know, your point across as quickly as you can and have fun. That's what it is. Now you're playing weight six four two and a quarter, okay? Right. Um, Nutra system yes. afterwards, but how much pizza did you do? How much did you blow up to before you got this? <laughs> yeah, I can't give that up. Uh, that information is, yeah, uh, this is only uh, me. I'm the only one that knows that. I'm not telling you. But, but yeah, Nutra system works, but at the same time, you do a couple days of Nutra system and let's go eat Anthony's pizza. You know, that's, that's part of the deal. Yep, all good. All Bef good. Before you retired, the Steelers and the Vikings were talking to you. Why did you sure. say no, and what did you think of Favre? His uh, man, Brett, well, f well, Brett's well, uh, Brett's been incredible. I mean, it really is uh, what he's been able to do, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy for him um, to be able to come back and play at 40 years old. You know, I know he's didn't know whether he was going to play or not, but you can still he can still throw it, he can still make plays, and if you can still play, you have to play be because to me, I mean, once once it's over. You're never going to get that opportunity again, and and, and, and I I you know retired because I just felt health wise, I wasn't going to be able to play you know maybe at the level that I that I wanted to play, uh, at and that I was used to playing at, and and in 17 years with the Dolphins to me meant something you know it meant something about you know playing with one team at, at the same time, and it just didn't feel right at the time going to play in Minnesota or Pittsburgh, but, but Brett's been terrific. Now, no discredit to his performances. However, he was pretty sly about getting out of those two-a-days and all that. How much did that that's hurt? A, that's overrated. Is it, it's <laughs> over to me, yeah, all those off-season camps, and I mean, coaches do it and teams do it, and it's important, need to do it, but if you got a player, you know, it's look at like Tom Brady or Peyton Manning and, and, and Brett Favre. You know, if you line them up, you got the right people. They know how to play the position. So, to me... A lot of those, they call them OTAs. I don't know, it's OTAs and off, a lot of off-season stuff. Sometimes it's a little much, in my opinion, and so. Does it bother you that a lot of people won't put you in the top three, top four quarterbacks all the time because you don't have a ring? Yeah, that's your opinion. <laughs> no, no, no. What no, 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 a lot of people no, really? say that. No, 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 <laughs> yeah. You know what? To be considered in the top ten, you know, with the way the world is in the league and the NFL, and these days guys are putting up numbers that are, just incredible. I mean, to me, it's about you know playing the game, loving the game, and, and to be considered. I mean, I, I would love to have a ring, obviously. You know, I mean, everybody would want to win a championship. I didn't, but I wouldn't pass up the 17 years of being <coughs> in the Hall of Fame and being a part of all that for for one Super Bowl ring. It's gridlock on ESPN Radio 1100. Dan Marino is our guest on this Wednesday. Well, I, I want to compare you to uh, to Kevin Garnett in the NBA because I always thought that Kevin Garnett with the Timberwolves yeah. had a chance to go down as um, one of the best forwards of all time, but people would say, doesn't have that ring yet, can't put him in that class. Then he goes to Boston his first year, he's playing with Allen, Pierce, yeah. company there, and lo and behold, they win a ring. Now they say, well, maybe it, it doesn't seem fair because he, he goes to a different team and now he's got this unbelievable talent around him. He, he wins a ring and now he's one of the best of all time. Well, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, that's what you said talent around them and there's and at times you know it's it's a team sport you know football's a team sport baseball you know basketball obviously and, and, and you've got to be in the right position at the right time I play with a lot of guys I went, a lot of guys I went to college with it they have Super Bowl rings and and they play two or three four years in the league you know I mean that's just the way mm -hmm. the way it is and, and it's more or less uh, to me I I miss the 
what the feeling was would have been like to walk off the field and say I was a Super Bowl champion. I mean, that, that's the one thing, the one feeling, you know, in my life that I've never had. Other than that, then I have no regrets about playing the game the way I did. I'm sure when you lost in 84 to the Niners, you'd get there a few more times. Too. Oh, no, there's no doubt. Yeah, yeah, I thought, I mean, we had Duper and Clayton. You know, that's the one thing you, sometimes, you know, you look back, it was a young age, I think I was 23 years old, and, and uh, you know, you take it for granted. Sometimes mm -hmm. you take for granted the fact that, you know, win the Super Bowl, we, that year we broke all the records. I mean, we're going to be back. I'm going to win a couple of Super Bowls. Next thing you know, you're 38 years old and, uh, and your career is pretty much over. What did you think last year? Brees was only 15 yards behind you to break your uh, most yards passing in the season. I think Manning's on pace to break it this year. Yeah, yeah, and, and someone's going to do that for sure. I mean, if it's if it's not Brees, it's going to be Peyton. Man, the way the rules are now, the way the game is set up to protect the quarterbacks and they don't jam anybody at the line of scrimmage. I mean, they're, mm -hmm. they're putting up numbers. I mean, at record record paces. I mean, there's 300 yards is like it's like nothing anymore. You know, it's more or less the standard now is 400. Before when I played, you know, you throw for 300, that was a big day. Now everybody's thrown for 300. Well, it's certainly going to get broken if uh, the commissioner <coughs> decides to uh, expand the regular season by a game, make it maybe 17 games, talk yeah, there. Yeah. But it's been around 25 years. That's pretty good. No kidding. Right. <laughs> do you, what do you think about him when he says, uh, not only are we going to play the annual game over in London, but now I want to make it three or four games, and then possibly let's take a Super Bowl over there? Yeah, I don't, I don't know about the Super Bowl. You know, I do think they're, they're really thinking about putting a team over there. And, and can you imagine that? Yeah, I, I, I could imagine it. I mean, I'm, I'm, I don't, I'm not saying I'm totally for it, but mm -hmm. I think it could happen because that's the way the game's going. They're looking for, you know, to expanding through Europe and making it a world, you know, the, the world audience is there, I think, uh, over time. But, but I think you'll see it. You'll see it. Now, the record that you hold, you know, for the season and most, do you parade around and uncork the bottle at the end like uh, Nick Bonacani and Mercury Morris? Uh, ah, you know what? No, no, you know I haven't. But they, but those guys, that's that was a special thing they did. You know, to go undefeated. In, what it was seventy two? So how many years is that now? You know, go do the math. Hurry up. Are you finding yourself rooting for yeah, them though, to keep that record? What's that? My record? No, their record. The, yes. Yeah. Why not? I mean, I know a lot of those guys and. Uh, they have a lot of pride in that, you know, but I do think that eventually that's going to go away because I mean, it's like the Saints, for example, this year, the way they're playing and the way their schedule sets up. I mean, they play Tampa twice. I think they play Carolina maybe two more times. I don't know for sure. But Redskins, Rams. The Redskins, Rams. Yeah. So you know it, right? Yeah. But I, I, mean, I looked at it last week, and I'm like, you know what? They got a shot, and they really have a shot to go undefeated. And Dallas and New England's at home. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So yeah. their schedule sets up pretty good. When they came to you about Ace Ventura, yes. Now at the time, it's like some people said, "Well, is it going to do anything?" That turned out to be a blockbuster. You did a pretty good job in that movie. <laughs> you know, when they came to me about it, I was like, "You know what? I'm, I don't want to do this." <laughs> I read it. I'm like, you know, I, it, it was it was crazy, but it turned out to be one of the fun things that that, that I did, and in, in, you know, during my playing years, and I made Jim Carrey what he is today. <laughs> I, I just take credit for that.